Hey, Canucks fans, let's talk about some positives from last night's loss. I'm Clay Emo. I'm at Canuck Clay on Twitter. I'm at Clayton Emo on Instagram. I'm the founder of the GLCPC, the Good Looking Canucks Positivity Club, and this is my Canucks take, all in one take. It's Clay's Canucks commentary for Thursday, February the 20th. And yes, I talked about what I liked, what I didn't like, and one other thing in my post game vlog, as I usually do, but I only have basically two minutes and 20 seconds to do that. And I, I didn't rush through things, but I wanted to get to a lot of things last night, but I wanted to be able to expand on them a little bit and be able to take a breath between sentences. So here's some positives from last night's loss. Yes, it was a loss. Yes, it would be nice to see the Canucks close out that game, not give up that fluky game time goal, five minutes left, and then close it, uh, you know, finish the wild off, either in overtime or the shootout, but it wasn't meant to be. And I'll talk about the shootout at the end of this vlog, but let's talk about some positives. Firstly, Tyler Toffoli, really great debut. 19 minutes of ice time, really nice assist to uh, JT Miller with that, uh, that hard half slap shot, half wrist shot. Half pass, you know what I mean. He, he found Miller in the slot uh, for a really nice deflection there. And overall, I thought it was a really, really um, um, good debut for him. Like I said, 19 minutes. He looked good. He looked fast. He looked strong on the puck. All the things that we wanted him to be. And yeah, he didn't have the best shootout attempt, but he, he did say to Canucks fans and media that he will make up for it. I hope so. That was pretty bad. That was kind of like what I do in my uh, in roller hockey. Although, I actually, I stay on my feet, but I do curl off to the corner sometimes with the puck, actually. But it's not about me. So overall, I thought he was great. And um, obviously a, a really good... He, he fit in seamlessly on that top line with Miller and Pedersen. I still, I still think ultimately you want him on that second line with Horvat and Pearson. Get Bo going, get Pearson going. And that's, of course, presuming that someone like Jake Vertanen now or Brock Besser when he comes back, um, hopefully in time for the last bit of the regular season in the playoffs, um, that Besser uh, takes his spot back in the top line. But for now, we'll see where Toffoli plays. Um, but he did look good with Miller and Pedersen. Miller, another two goals. He takes over the scoring lead, the team scoring lead from Pedersen. Miller now has 59 points. Pedersen has 58 points, and that's because Pedersen didn't have any points yesterday, whereas Miller had two goals, the second and third goals for the Canucks. Both of them showing a skill. One of them was that deflection, I, I, like I said, off of Toffoli's nice pass. That was the second goal for the Canucks. And his third goal, he was able to gather the puck and put a, a, a strong wrist shot past Devin Dubnik uh, to give the Canucks the lead. It was actually two goals in the three or four minutes, which was exciting before Minnesota tied it up a little bit later. So uh, JT Miller, once again, um, showing his worth. No one complaining about the trade now, and leading a scorer. We'll see who ends up with more points at the end, but right now he's one up on Pedersen. Quinn Hughes, two assists. I marvel every time I see this guy, either live or on TV, and um, the two assists were, were both good. You know, one of them, um, I think they're both uh, secondary assists now that I think about it, but regardless, he is uh, um, playing very well. Actually, what am I talking about? The, the first goal was a pri uh, primary assist. It was that beautiful two-on-one pass to Beagle, and I like that because he gained the blue line, kept control of the puck, drew the defender, and held it. You know, I, he held it way longer than I thought he should, but he's a lot smarter than I am. That's why he's playing in the NHL. And he made a beautiful pass to Beagle, and all Beagle had to do is keep his stick on the ice. So that was great. And then the, his second assist was a secondary assist. That was the one where it went him to Toffoli to, um, to uh, JT Miller in the slot. So overall, uh, a great game. All, showing his offensive flair, his offensive skill. I just love the way he creates space and I love the way he does that little quick pivot on the blue line, works his way into the slot, and then gets a, a good shot off. So whether the shot goes in or a deflection or, or a rebound, whatever it may be. And it's weird. We know it's going to happen. And I think the opposition forward knows it's going to happen. But still, they can't stop it because uh, he was, is so smooth um, with the puck. So it was a beautiful thing to see. And he remains two points up on Kale McCarr in the rookie scoring. And I've, uh, so Hughes has um, 47 points. Makar has 45 points. Hughes has played 59 games. Makar has played 51 games. Now that gap, actually, the points per game gap isn't that big. Makar is at 0.88 points per game. Hughes is right behind him at 0 0.80 points per game. So 0 0.88 for Makar, 0 0.80 for Hughes. And I've said this all along. If Hughes wins up, ends up winning the scoring title, I think um, the points per game is going to be minimal difference. And uh, I really think that voters will recognize his durability and his, his consistency in playing 81 um, God willing, of the 82 games, which McCarr will only have a chance to play 73 or 74 of Colorado's 82 games. So if you win the scoring race and you play 81 of those 82 games, to me, that's that's a really good case for a Calder Trophy uh, win for Quinn Hughes. So we'll see. But um, I think he's not only closed the gap, but he's at least evened it out. And dare I say, he's the favorite right now. But uh, still, a lot of hockey to be played before those votes get cast. So again, love Toffoli's game. 
Uh, really like JT Miller's game, Quinn Hughes' game. And Tyler Mott, he makes such a difference when he's on the fourth line. The fourth line doesn't get buried in their own zone because Mott, he, he hustles, he works, he's like the Energizer Bunny, kind of like Yannick Hansen. We saw his really nice play, sacrificing his body on the first goal when he was able to uh, tip the puck up, um, get it out of the zone to Quinn Hughes to create that two-on-one. And he made another really great diving back check as well. And I think he took a shot off the hand and still played through it. So overall, yeah, he's been uh, beset with a few injuries, but Tyler Mott, a warrior, and he makes such a difference when he's in the lineup so those are the four guys that stood out to me last night Toffoli Miller Hughes and Tyler Mott so all good things and don't forget like I said Miller is now leading the club scoring lead in this club scoring lead and Hughes is still two points up on Kale McCarr in the NHL rookie scoring race all right last thing I want to uh, two more things I want to talk about the shootout it's too bad the Canucks couldn't put the game away, especially when they scored on their first two shooters. That means only the third shooter had to score or Markstrom had to make that third save, but we know that wasn't to be. Um, and I love Pedersen and Miller. Uh, I just finished talking about they're the two highest point getters for the Canucks, so it makes sense that they shoot first, especially when Pedersen scores. It puts a lot of pressure when he scores, when he goes first. It puts a lot of pressure on their team. So Pedersen's good. JT Miller's good. And then yesterday, Toffoli might have been more of a feel-good story, but he doesn't have good... Um, career stats, so maybe uh, Travis Green overthought that or underthought that a little bit, but it would be nice if Toffoli put it away. Um, and then you went, I think you went Pearson and then Horvat, and all three of those guys, Toffoli, Pearson, Horvat, all missed. Hor Pearson and Horvat, they're decent offensive players, and Pearson is, uh, they both got good releases, but you know, when you think about it, I heard on the the morning, this on the radio this morning, that Brandon Sutter is four for 12 in his career, so 33%, that's higher than almost everyone else on the Canucks. Um, I would love to see Quinn Hughes. He's got such good hands um, that, uh, you know, he's, he's not obviously, on, he doesn't get a lot of breakaways, but he's got such good hands and such good skating. I think he could create a lot of deception and lateral movement. So I'd love to see Quinn Hughes take more shootout attempts. I'd love to see Jake Vertan, and Yeah, he doesn't have the best hands, but he is fast and he's got a quick release. So maybe he can just zoom in there as fast as he can, kind of confuse the goalie and then get a quick wrist shot or snapshot off before the goalie can get set. Whatever it is, I think the Canucks... Um, that's a weaker part of their game. I'm not talking about the goaltending. I'm talking about the actual shooting when it comes to the, the shootout itself. So, in a per yeah, and Pearson is good. Horvat's good. So, maybe, um, and let's presume Bester's healthy. Give me your top seven shooters. Let's presume it goes seven rounds. Who would, what would your order be? I'm going to go Pedersen, Miller, Besser. Again, presuming he's healthy. Then I'm going Hughes, mm, Vertanen. Pearson, Toffoli, Horvat. Okay, I gave you eight, but is I put the captain at number eight of those eight. Um, although I love him, he's my favorite player, as you know. And if Bo's dad's watching this, Tim, I still love your son. But I, I'm not sure if he's the most effective on on breakaways on, on shootout attempts. I, I think he's really effective when he's dragging a guy with him, um, carrying the cross the line, or making a, a bull rush move to the net. But then. Um, uh, with a defender draped over him. So, you know, six, seven, eight between Pearson, Horvat, and, and Toffoli. I think you go either way. Toffoli, he's had bad shootout uh, career numbers, but he's still uh, offensively talented, and I think Pearson can score as well. So I definitely, my, my top three is definitely Pedersen, Miller, and then Besser, if if healthy. Then I would try Quinn, and then Jake Vertanen, and then I would do some combination of Pearson, uh, Toffoli and Horvat. So there's my top eight. Let's go with the top eight. So uh, Canucks fans, let me know your top eight down below. Would love to know uh, your thoughts of a of, uh, of shootout order. Uh, and I didn't even mention Brandon Sutter, who's four for 12. So maybe Brandon Sutter goes in that, that bottom mix as well. And then lastly, uh, tonight is one of the season ticket member events, the one of the bigger ones. You know, there's, there's some where they're kind of smaller, they're more exclusive. This one's a bit of a catch-all, a bigger one, just like the, the open practice was on the weekend. So tonight it is meet the team. So basically, I think they have the big five. I think they have Besser, Hughes, Horvat, Pedersen, and Markstrom. They're kind of like the marquee players where you can only go to one of those five guys. You have a station, so to speak. And then the rest of the players are kind of milling about uh, in the concourse, interactive games and, and things like that. So I'm in the Besser station. So it'll be good to see, say hi to him and see, check on him, see how he's doing. I won't give him a, you know, a playful shot to the ribs, but I might give him a, you know, a hug or something. Bring my friend Lucas. I tweeted about him last night. Brilliant eight-year-old kid from my church community, very close to his family, and I know he's very excited about tonight. So if you're at the Canucks season ticket holder meet the team event, would love to say hi. I'll be wearing this without the tie and um, be carrying my Besser jersey around for uh, for an autograph and maybe a picture 
but more importantly, I'm excited for Lucas to have this opportunity. I know he's been looking forward to it for the last couple of days. Um, we still have to figure out how he's going to get to my office. Or I don't think he can put an eight-year-old on the SkyTrain by himself. But we'll see. That's up to his parents. We'll figure that out later. So, Canucks fans, if you're at the Season Ticket Member event today, I'd love to say hi to you and chat Canucks with you as well. So, there we go. Lots to talk about. The good from last night. Toffoli, Pedersen, no, Toffoli, Miller, Hughes, Mott. Talked a bit about shootout order, preferred order of shooters and a bit about tonight's Meet the Team event. Leave a comment below. I'd love to read, react, reply. Love the engagement that's going on. Love that these videos are, are getting some traction once again as the Canucks continue to battle for that playoff spot. Not only that, but battle for number one in the division. Only one point back of the Edmonton Oilers equal number of games. So we're right there. And I'm not worried. Uh, we just got to continue to playing hard. And our next game is at home against Boston on Saturday. So Canucks fans, leave a comment below. I love to read, react, and apply. Subscribe if you'd like to. Like this video if you'd like to. Enjoy the day. Enjoy the sun. It's beautiful out there. God bless. Go Canucks go.